Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is going to be an incredible year for building or grading your gaming PC. And we've got all new CPUs and GPUs uh, from both AMD and Nvidia, although so far we've mainly got the higher end flagship models. Uh, that's as well as next gen PCI 5 SSD storage and uh, DDR5 RAM, as well as all new monitors that are bigger and faster and better than ever. It's all very exciting, but it could also be very expensive. In fact, we've just built these two pretty beastly rigs for the studio. One is all AMD based with the latest Ryzen chips and Radeon graphics, and one is Intel and Nvidia based. And while I am very happy with them and I'll link to the parts used below, putting them together reminded me just how tricky it can be, especially when it comes to choosing what parts you need without totally going over your budget. So I thought I'd share some pretty high level tips about building a great gaming PC. And if you've got any tips and experiences yourself, then also share them in the comments below. And the best bit is I'm giving away a PC, but not just any PC. I've teamed up with AMD and Scan.co.uk to give away a gaming rig worth over three thousand pounds. Stay tuned to find out how you can win. Although I should say it is a UK only competition. I know, I know, I blame Brexit. Number one, and possibly the most costly mistake you can make, is buying the wrong graphics card. The right GPU is one that has the power you need for the games you play at the resolution you play them at, and one that's not bottlenecked by the rest of your system, and also one that hits your budget. Now as I'm filming this in late January 2023, we pretty much only have the high-end and flagship graphics cards from both AMD and Nvidia, which is all well and good and they offer some very impressive performance, especially gen on gen, but they're also very expensive and really only meant for high refresh 1440p, 4K and even 8K setups. But if you do go top end, remember that your CPU and your RAM also need to be able to keep up, although a mid-range CPU from the last couple of years with 16 gigs of RAM should be fine. So right now is a bit of an awkward time if you are gonna buy a mid-range PC or upgrade your card because these are just too expensive and overkill for the vast majority of us. So if you can, I would wait a couple of months. You can of course still buy last gen cards, but generally they're not offering the best value and considering you're gonna probably hold onto your card for two, three, four, five years, of course in tech, you can always wait just a few more months for the next best thing, but right now, I would wait. Okay, number two, and similar theme really, don't go overboard with your CPU, your processor. Honestly, for gaming, any new or recent i5 or R5 uh, from Intel or AMD CPU will be absolutely fine for gaming. And also, there are loads of new, more affordable CPUs on their way. The only caveat is if you do plan to use your PC uh, for you know, video editing, workstation, tasks, or you know, game streaming, perhaps with OBS, all that stuff will utilize the CPU, and so it's probably worth going for a higher-end i7 or at least a more recent generation version chip from either Intel or AMD. If you are investing for the long term, then AMD actually may be a better choice as they do tend to support their sockets for longer than Intel does, meaning you can probably drop in a new CPU in three to four years without maybe changing the motherboard. In fact, last gen Ryzen 5000 series CPUs like the 5600 and the 5800X3D are fantastic gaming CPUs and are cheaper than ever. And as they use the AM4 socket, they make a great upgrade if you're on an older first or second gen Ryzen motherboard. Tip number three, and if you already have an AMD CPU and maybe you're on the fence between going for an NVIDIA or AMD GPU, then consider the AMD Advantage, which sounds like something you get with a new credit card, but it's where the two work together intelligently to share resources. For example, you get Smart Access Memory, or SAM, which allows Ryzen CPUs full access to the Radeon's fast VRAM memory, which then helps boost the CPU when it needs it. And there's also Smart Shift, which allows the system to shift power between the CPU and the GPU, depending on what it needs most. The performance up it can vary between the app and the game you're playing, but it, sometimes it can be in the order of 5, 10, 15%, but it is one medium level advantage of going full AMD as opposed to Intel and Nvidia or AMD and Nvidia. Tip number four, and let's go back to GPUs because it's not all about raw performance. AI upscaling via the likes of DLSS 2 and 3 on Nvidia cards, and also FSR and FSR 2 on Radeons can boost frame rates even on low and mid-range cards to more than playable levels, or even high refresh at 1080 or 1440, and it's the best way to get playable frames with ray tracing, especially if you want to play at 4K. Now because it is a form of upscaling, image quality can take a hit at the more extreme settings, but if you go with balance or quality, you can get a significant frame rate boost, and in most cases, image quality is the same. Now I must say, I am a big fan of AMD's new cards, particularly the 7900 XTX. I think that actually for just pure rasterized gaming performance, not including ray tracing and the likes, uh, this is probably the best value card you can buy right now as I'm filming it. But one area that does kind of tempt me away from Team Red to Team Green is just that DLSS performance, particularly DLSS 3. And in terms of that upscaling and that boosted performance, and also in the range of games that it's supported in, 
Nvidia definitely takes the win. And particularly with these new 40 series cards where we get frame generation, where the AI takes two frames and creates another one to insert between them and boost frame rates further. Although this does increase latency. And while Nvidia Reflex can help to mitigate that, generally I wouldn't use frame gen in any sort of competitive or twitchy shooters. And it is only available in a very small handful of games. So it's kind of frustrating. I want to go full AMD to get that AMD advantage and also it can be better value for money generally. But then I want to go NVIDIA because I think DLSS is a better technology or at least more advanced and also better supported. And there's also a ton of extras you get with NVIDIA like their broadcast suite and their studio drivers and a whole bunch of sort of value added stuff. Number five, and I know it's a dirty word, I'm going to get told off for mentioning this, but I still think pre-built PCs are absolutely worth considering. Of course, building your own has its own advantages, and there's tons of satisfaction to get when it boots up for the first time, if it boots up for the first time, but it can take hours. Things can go wrong, you can cut your finger on the metal, and you can completely destroy components if you're not careful. And so one of the main benefits of buying a pre-built from a retailer is you get a warranty for the whole system. And also, while components can be cheaper if you source them yourself and also you know exactly what you're going to get, the problem is with graphics cards in particular is that you can very rarely get them for uh, MSRP prices. Generally, you always have to pay over the odds. Actually, buying a pre-built can end up being cheaper. Of course, this won't suit everyone, especially if you do like the build process or want full control, but that's what PC Building Simulator 2 is for, right? Although joking apart, that game is a great way of testing layouts with real life parts, and it's a good refresher on the whole build process before you do it for real. Okay, just a quick mention of the competition in this video where I get to give away a PC worth over £3,000 as I've teamed up with AMD and scan.co.uk. To win this awesome scan 3XS Vengeance XDX PC worth almost three and a half grand, just make sure you've subscribed, given this video a thumbs up, and also leave a comment below telling me what the first game you would play on that new rig would be and why. It is an insanely powerful PC with the latest Ryzen CPUs and Radeon GPUs, which of course also means we get that tasty AMD advantage as well. And it's all been put together by Scan's 3XS build team. And if you do want to check out Scan for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below. And then one of your lucky stars will have a fancy new gaming PC. Now, as I say, this is a UK competition only, I'm afraid although I am working on other giveaways soon, which will be global. Uh, but if you are in the UK, good luck. Tip number six, and one thing I see a lot of people do is paying way more than they need to for their motherboard. And they have a million features that they never actually use. So try to avoid overspending on your motherboard. Now, full-size ATX boards will give you more for your money, though if you want a more compact system, then you will have to pay a little bit more for a micro ATX or even a smaller mini ITX board. The next step is making sure your motherboard fits your CPU. This is quite important. AM5 for the latest Ryzen 7000 CPUs and LG1700 for both 12th and 13th gen Intel. And also all these get the latest PCIe 5 support, which means a faster interface with both the GPU and also your M2 SSDs. Importantly, there are separate DDR4 and DDR5-based boards, so make sure you choose one that suits the RAM you have or you're going to get, as the latest DDR5 DIMMs won't fit DDR4 slots and vice versa. Also, if you plan to use an Ethernet port for internet, then go with the non-Wi-Fi model. And also, while Thunderbolt is nice to have for large file transfers, it's not essential. And also, AMD's lower tier B-series boards do allow overclocking, although perhaps not to quite the same extent. Tip number seven, and let's talk about RAM, because my friend over at PC Centric, Marcus Cole, recently made a video comparing DDR4 and DDR5 performance in games. And the conclusion is, it doesn't really have a meaningful impact. Even tested with a top-end CPU and GPU, 16 gigs of DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM is totally fine and won't bottleneck your performance. That said, if you are going with a new AMD 7000 build or Intel 13th gen, then chances are your motherboard will support DDR5 anyway. It is more expensive than DDR4, but nowhere near as pricey as it was. I do still maintain that 16 gigs RAM is the sweet spot, but if you are doing a ton of intense multitasking, you've got OBS streams and Discord and your game running and a dozen Chrome tabs, then Yes, I would probably go for 32 gigs of RAM. And also if you plan to use your beastly PC as a bit of a workstation as well and do some video editing or rendering. But whatever you buy, make sure to enable XMP on Intel or DOCP for AM4 and AM5 in your motherboard BIOS to get the full rated RAM speed. Another mistake I see a lot is people buying these very fancy cases uh, that look great, but they're just big plastic sheets on the front and side. And there's really no ventilation or like a tiny bit of an inlet on the side. That annoys me no end. And so case wise, anything with a mesh front and maybe two or three fans should get you plenty of airflow. And if your case doesn't have one, then at least grab a rear exhaust fan. And also anything beyond five or six fans probably won't make much difference. Now, in my experience, a good AIO liquid cooler is the best option for most builds, but you also can't go wrong with a big old air cooler. 
Crucially though, make sure you check reviews and spec sheets to make sure your cooler works well and is also rated for your CPU wattage or more if you plan to overclock, which I think most of us do. In either case though, more fans and a bigger surface area usually means better cooling. Also, one thing I have learned from bitter personal experience is if you are gonna build a mini or micro ATX PC and you're maybe gonna go with a big air cooler, make sure it fits and also doesn't get in the way of the RAM and the VRM heat sinks on the motherboard. Uh, I've been there and it's not fun. Number nine, we're almost there, I promise. And just a few little tips and tweaks to get the most out of your PC. It's all pretty uh, obvious stuff, but update your drivers. Overclock your CPU and your GPU. Of course, do that incrementally, bit by bit, and also it's worth following guides. But it can be pretty straightforward to overclock, and you can get a good 10, 15% performance sometimes uh, out of your system, and it's essentially free performance. Just make sure you do it slowly, gradually, and safely. And there are also cheaper upgrades that can make a big difference, not just having to buy a whole new graphics card. For example, an extra fan can mean less throttling, quieter system and potentially better overclocking. And also adding a faster SSD is one of the most cost effective upgrades. Also, as I'm sure you'll agree, no PC is complete without some go faster RGB. And one thing I have found from experience is that going with just a single brand for fans and some of the other components can make your RGB and lighting life a whole lot more straightforward. I tend to use Corsair fans, AIOs, and their bundled fan and RGB hub, mostly as I've had them for years with no problems, and I think they look great. Plus, by connecting to a Corsair hub and from there a USB header, you can control the lot as one or individually via their IQ software. And finally, number 10, don't be creepy. And of course by that I mean be careful of upgrade creep. And that's where you're researching and specking a new PC and you think, oh, if I just pay 30 pounds more there for a slight uh, faster uh, you know, SSD or I pay a little bit more there for a higher wattage PSU or maybe I go for that level up GPU. Managing your budget when you're getting excited and building a PC is incredibly tough and it's easy to get carried away and pay way more than you need. So I would say just plan a little bit. Set your upgrade or build budget. And sure, there's bound to be something you've forgotten, but just watch a few build guides and you should be fine. And remember, you don't have to upgrade everything all at once. But what about you? Have you ever made any mistakes building a PC? Uh, and also, what would you have liked to have known perhaps before starting on a build? Share your tips and experiences in the comments below as well. And also, don't forget the competition. If you live in the UK, just give me a thumbs up, a subscribe, and leave a comment on what game you'd love to play on it. And you can be the chance of winning a brand new gaming PC worth over three grand, courtesy of my friends over at scan.co.uk and also AMD. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for a big monitor buying guide, which I've got coming very soon. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.